Hello and welcome to this behind the scenes video for Digital Foundry where I today I'm going to be putting together a PC from the year 2004, 2005. A very special year for PC gaming as I see it. A lot of the greats came out around that time. You have Far Cry, Doom 3, Half-Life 2. So many really wonderful games came out around this time. Oblivion, my goodness. And this is a PC that would have been purpose-built for that period of time, basically to run these games. Very new hardware for that time. We have a kind of Enforce motherboard here. I'm pretty sure it's a Gigabyte, what is it? Enforce 4 Ultra, something crazy uh, sounding. Like everything back then had insane names, just like they do nowadays. It is using uh, PCIe and not AGP, which is great because it's faster and forward compatible. Um, I have four gigs of DDR400 here, all in individual sticks, which would not have actually been very, um, something that you would expect for the time period. Uh, my PC that I built around this time originally was actually very different than this one. This one is using a, an Athlon X2 3800 Plus. This was more like the Q6600 of the time period. Very great performance for the money you would give out for it. Uh, the GPU is a little bit different. It's also a pretty good price performance for this time period, but a bit different uh, than it looked uh, back then because it's been modded with this original Accelero X1 cooler, which is actually one of the first separate GPU coolers that I can actually remember coming out. Um, this is a NVIDIA 6800 GT with DirectX 9.0 C support, um, so it can play games into the future generation that perhaps its competitor at the time in the ATI series, the X800 and the X850 series, uh, could not do since they support a 9.0B in comparison to this 9.0C. You know, I'm actually surprised that this um, GPU doesn't have any VGA outs, just has your S video and then uh, two DVIs, which I guess for the time period would be interesting. Not having VGA was either an advantage or a complete disadvantage. You'd have to go DVI to VGA uh, for many older monitors from this time period. I back at this time period was still using a CRT that used VGA. So I'm actually surprised that this is only DVI. There actually does seem to be a reference design here. That's pretty crazy. NVIDIA Corporation. There's no um, non-NVIDIA stickers on this. Nothing from Gigabyte and the like or anything else from, that you would have found around that time period. My PC at this time was very different than this one because it actually had the exact opposite manufacturer and IHV support. I had the ATI X800 XT, so no 6800 GT like you see here. And I also had a Pentium 4, I forget the exact numbering on it, but it was the 3.4 gigahertz edition with hyper threading and originally one gigabyte of DDR 400 RAM, or, or maybe it was 533 actually. You have Vista coming up and Windows is now going to be requiring basically more uh, memory to be even functioning correctly. So I, like this build here, upgraded to three gigabytes of RAM originally for Battlefield 2 at the time, and then upgraded to four gigabytes uh, for Windows Vista when the time came. But by then I also had bought a completely different PC. That's when I upgraded quite later on from uh, a Windows XP Media Center Edition PC to um, basically my Crisis Rig, which was three years later. Uh, but this is a pretty interesting PC because I actually didn't have any of these components at this time, and I've never actually experienced how it works. And for this PC together, I don't actually have anything special for the hard drive, just a one terabyte Seagate that was produced in the year 2007, and I haven't even checked if it works. So if this doesn't work, forgive me. The power supply itself is also nothing very uh, impressive or even very interesting. It's a 420 watt deluxe power supply, some sort of manufacturer that I've actually never even heard of. This one, like everything here, I've grabbed everything more or less off of eBay Kleinanzeige, which is the German kind of local equivalent of eBay, which is I found is an immense resource for old PC gaming parts over the years. This was grabbed for less than 10 euros. This came together with the 3800 plus here uh, for, I think I got it originally for around 60 euros. That was with shipping, so it was 55 euros, 60 with shipping to me from someone else, Thuringen. This case is also one that I found here in Berlin for, I think a little bit less than uh, 10 euros in the end. 
Uh, it's nothing actually too special. It's just any sort of ATX case that you can grab, except for the fact that it has a totally strange uh, ability to take off the sides with handlebars. Uh, you have to unscrew the top and pull out these handlebars to take off the sides of the casing, which I've actually never seen before. Um, so that is pretty weird. Uh, it's from a company called Terra, a company I've also never heard of. So I think uh, that's enough about the PC here. I really can't wait to see it up and running. I do plan on um, installing not Windows XP on this machine uh, for ease of use and for forward compatibility uh, for games that I would like to try on it. Not just games from the 2004, 2005 period, but also games uh, from later on because the 6800 GT, it could run games, basically DirectX 9 games until the end of the Xbox 360 generation. Uh, so as long as there's drivers for it and the game's DirectX 9.0C, this card will support it. Uh, I don't know how well it will support it, but it will. So that's something I wanted to try out with this rig as well, going a bit further uh, into the future than it was probably recommended to. This GPU in the end, like any GPU from this 2004-2005 period, would have really scaled kind of only okay against the PS3 and the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 obviously is a completely different architecture than this because it came from ATI and was unified shader cores. This has the standard traditional DirectX 9.0 pixel vertex shader pipeline jazz, you know, all that stuff from that time period that we don't have in GPUs to the same degree anymore. This though is much sim more similar to the PS3 GPU. Yeah, so a really cool GPU from that time period. So let's get cracking. Well, that worked surprisingly perfectly, right? Well, not really. I mean, I did actually try and turn it on only to find out that it wasn't actually working the first time. So through the power of montage, this looks like it was perfect. Uh, I did end up trying a whole bunch of things to try and get it to work in the end, uh, finding out that the power supply, the deluxe power supply was the thing that was not working. So I have set up this Frankenstein kind of monster underneath my desk where the guts of one PC are spilling into another. I'm using the power supply from my Core i5 machine to power this and I'm just leaving it outside the case right now because that's just too much. But let's install some Windows Vista 64-bit. Windows Vista's initial pre-service pack 1 install disk, if I remember, had the problem of crashing or stopping the installation for n um, no apparent reason when you would install with 4 gigabytes of RAM. And I remember that plaguing me when I was building my Crisis PC back in the day in 2007. But here, I'm using a disk preloaded with service pack 1, which should not have this problem at all, I think. I hope. Um, but if I do recall, it does uh, not allow you to have any USB drives attached to the PC that could be bootable because, oh gosh, it'll just crash. <laughs> this is such a nostalgia trip. Call me crazy, but I actually like these serene blues and greens and off-whites uh, and Aurori that are found all across the Windows Vista design, coming from that kind of hardcore Playmobil look of Windows XP. Um, this felt so much mellower and sophisticated, I guess. Um, so let's name this PC the 2004 Beast. Uh, which avatar? A dog. Okay. You know, just sitting here and using this, I actually don't think this is such a horrible user experience. I expected it to be so much worse. Um, I don't remember it being bad, but just kind of over time, you always hear about Windows Vista being such a bad product, but it's pretty straightforward to install and use. I guess it's kind of what uh, Vista was all about, offering 
Uh, after you install generic usable drivers for components, uh, which was a big plus, and then also having the desktop be hardware accelerated uh, through Arrow. Uh, it would provide, I guess, an easier install and first boot experience as long as your third-party devices with, you know, their own drivers uh, had compatible device drivers by the time Windows Vista was out, which was definitely not the case uh, from what I remember back then. Uh, right after Vista's launch, so there was a lot of crashing and a lot of bugs basically between non-standard devices and Windows Vista. Uh, so that's a thing that happened and caused a lot of controversy most definitely. Vista also killed um, the sound card industry more or less by standardizing how sound was handled in Windows, which I actually don't think was such a bad thing in the end. I guess you lose hardware acceleration there. Um, but at the same time, you gain a standardization uh, for developers to code against, which is way better. And I think, honestly, thinking about CPUs back then, if you had a dual core like this X2 here, or my goodness, a, a quad core from Intel later on, they were going to be powerful enough anyways to do most of the hard work regarding sound rendering. So I guess it's not such a bad thing. I guess it, it, it does, it could cause problems though for legacy games. I guess my PC is a collection 4.5 score for the Windows experience uh, here. I'm actually surprised that the memory speed is causing the lowest score here because I really thought it would be the hard drive, which uh, is really loud by the way, so I'm probably going to have to replace it. I guess um, starting around uh, Service Pack 1's time period, more people had probably moved on to DDR2-667 or DDR2-800 megahertz, leaving this sad DDR4-100 megahertz in the dust. Ugh, look at these widgets. Nice try, Microsoft. So I guess it's time to install some GPU and chipset drivers here, uh, which will make things much better from a visual standpoint. Ah, oh, that's so much better. A 1080p desktop here with Arrow looks pretty darn great, if I must say so. You get these nice transparency effects behind the windows and everything's really fast. Well, uh, as fast as a platter drive will really be. Of course, Arrow in the end uh, is hardware accelerated, which I just mentioned a little ago. Uh, it will steal some VRAM and a little bit of GPU performance, I believe, in game. So that's why I would, if I recall, GPU benchmarks of that time would have seen lessened GPU scores under Windows Vista, uh, but you could turn off Arrow if you wanted. Uh, I do like it too much to turn off right now. So I'm sitting here at the desktop, I have a fresh brand new PC, what's the first thing you do? Crisis. You install Crisis, of course, so let's get that in the drive and get going. So let's install this thing up and put some patches on it. Crytek Maximum Game. This game, of course, coming out in 2007, was not at all designed around this PC, which has a GPU from the year 2004 and a CPU from the year 2005, more or less. It was, they say Core 2 Extreme inside, it wasn't really even designed around Core 2 Quads or anything like that. Just the highest single-threaded performance you could get. It does scale to two or three or even four threads, but mainly just two and single threaded performance. So here I'm gonna go into the options and turn everything up to medium or at least, well, 1280 by 720 uh, if I can at medium because that's a good resolution and it'll look fine at least on this stream that you're seeing out to you. Obviously changing the the the, uh, the graphical options here, the, the object quality will stay to low. So even with that one factor on low, I don't actually expect this to run well at all on medium at 1280 by 720. This this uh, GPU is not at all ready to play Crisis <laughs> at these settings, uh, but it is loading rather fast. That is, uh, it's not bad. I mean, it is a 7200 RPM drive uh, dual core. The, the game will definitely take advantage of that really well. But like I was saying, P Crisis was way ahead of time uh, here, so it should not run this game well at all. And in fact, as it gets in game here, Yep, seven days later, 
Also, seven... Oh, that stutter. Seven FPS. This <laughs> is so intense. Medium settings in Crisis, of course, look better than pretty much every other game from that time period. Um, the 6800 GT is so far behind to even play this game at medium at 1280 by 720. I don't even think uh, lowering the resolution would really even help at all here. Uh, oh my gosh, look at Psycho there. This is great. There, the, since the resolution's low and the shader quality is a bit lower, their eyes look a little bit funny. Um, but uh, yeah, this this GPU was not at all meant for this. It's not CPU limited at the moment. It would be actually running pretty fine if there was a better GPU in here. It just shows to show back then at this time period. Uh, I mean, Crisis is not the best example because it's so far in the future um, in terms of what its design was oriented toward. Just how brutal the PC market was. This GPU is three years old by the time Crisis comes out and the medium settings, not even the lowest, uh, at a, I would say, a okay resolution for that time, you'd probably be at like 1440 by 900 or a CRT. Oh gosh, um, th this is just not at all playable. So let's go into the menu and turn it to 800 by 600 with low settings, uh, which should be low across the board. This is essentially how I played Crisis back in the day at these settings. Yes, it's really, really ugly as you can see here. But still, it's decidedly better than not being able to play the game at all. C Crisis, of course, did not scale its graphics down below medium at all very well. Medium started editing things like shadow maps and, you know, just like the basic look, of, which is essential to the basic look of the game. Um, if you turn off shadow maps, uh, the game just looks like even worse than Far Cry because it, Far Cry at least used baked shadows. Uh, on the terrain and things like that this doesn't have any shadows at all so which is why it looks so hideous um when when playing this right now though this is essentially how i played the demo the first time i played crisis back on the day on the x800 xt machine uh with a pentium 4 3.4 gigahertz with ht it ran more or less like this uh, except it did not even have the capability to go to medium settings uh medium uh, required shader model 3.0 or 9.0 C. 9.0 B though would still run <laughs> um, 30 FPS. I mean, it's okay. Uh, would I play the game like this through? And it's uh, it uh, is such a joy to play. My God, I love the interactivity here. Uh, um, moving forward, the, the 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 performance though is not steady. This is using VSync, which interestingly is kind of double buffered here. I didn't expect that, um, but it's going to be hugging to 30 FPS and having some dips above and below when it, it, it essentially, like when it could have reached 60 for that one split second, it'll do that. But I honestly don't expect it to be that way at all throughout this, oh my gosh, yeah. So like when you get close, when loading occurs, uh, when uh, any sort of large group of vegetation comes into view, like here, whoa, okay. Um, you're going to be in the 20s because the GPU, even at these incredibly low settings, it's just not at all made for the density of geometry and the density of alpha effects that Crisis throws on screen. I mean, most games, even in the 2004 period when this GPU came out, would not have even had anywhere near as much alpha geometry on screen as we're seeing right here, right now. And this is oh, so brutal. Um, the games that I actually will be running in uh, on this computer in dedicated videos, though, will be much different than this. They'll be running decidedly better, even at higher resolutions. Crisis, oh, I'm gonna skip that. Um, but uh, Crisis is just way ahead of the curve and going up the steps. It's kind of funny, 25 FPS. It's almost running with way worse graphics than the console versions years later. But, you know, it's it's Crisis. You can't expect too much. But I think that's where I'm going to leave this video. The christening of this new PC, of course, has to be with Crisis, even though it wasn't at all prepared for it. And it kind of uh, wet the bed with it. But I expect better things in the future when I look at, like, Half-Life 2, Doom, the predecessor to Crisis in Far Cry, and a whole bunch of other games. Uh, and until then, I hope you did enjoy this look back with the 2004-2005 PC. I'm excited to see what I can do with it in the future. And if you did like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. 
If you're already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please support us on Patreon to get years of Digital Foundry content available for download. If you want to talk to me about Crisis on a 2004-2005 PC, AGP versus PCIe, or any of those great things like Windows Vista, write a comment below, or follow Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.